See, they say, Mike, we know you're a lib Jew. It's okay. We still love you. That's the most heartbreaking part about it (laughs) is you can't have an alternative opinion without being lib or Jew or, and that's the heartbreaking part. That's the part where I beg that people understand that I would never do that. I would, you know, this is the creators of your spot. This is the most unlib person. This is a person who wants people of the opposite sex and gays and all that to have hardships. You know, <laughs> this is a guy who wants He's been trying immigrants out of this country. This is a guy who wants immigrants working hard for little. I don't know what to tell you. If you, if you think, and this is what I mean. People are getting. They're getting confused. They hate the left, so they think that they have to pretend Andrew Tate is good. That's too far for me. That's too far for me. Okay. We can all agree on the Obama thing. We we can agree on Obama. Send me some Obama, because wait till you hear what this... And I know no one's watching this, because it was a Twitter video. So Twitter is now doing long form video where everyone on Twitter pretends they've watched these videos, but there's no way they have. A Twitter user cannot just watch a video without being able to scroll. I I just don't buy it. They're passing these videos in their feeds. Each time they pass the video, it's getting five clicks. And Twitter is just lying to you. Elon's lying to you. All these people are lying to you, and they're lying to themselves. Everybody knows those numbers aren't real. Everybody knows Tucker Carlson's videos aren't getting 250 million views. Oh, yeah, Tucker Carlson's videos are getting 250 million views. Nobody's watching that. Even the people who pretend they watched it, they watch five minutes, they skim through, and then they go, I need to go back to my feed so I could read more tweets. They're not watching it. It's impossible to watch. Um, again, there's no way to do it. I can't believe they don't even do like a pop-up player so you can continue to scroll through your feed. When people are on Twitter, they want to look at a million things at once. They're amped. They're on the Twitter drug. They're addicts. They're not sitting and stopping their tweet fights for a movie. But Tucker Carlson claims, yeah, 200 million views. I mean, this guy is so bad. He's he's lying directly to your face. But he did have on a very truthful guest. <laughs> I like this. This is something I agree on. And it's not Tucker. It's this old guy. Uh, is he a next up here? Yep. When Tweezer, Obama, gay guy and Tucker. Okay, here it is. Twitter video. Will it work on the show? Let's find out. Here he is. Let's see how many... 28.4 million views, of course. Easy as pie. Uh, Larry Sinclair says he has a, had a night of crack cocaine-fueled sex with Barack Obama. What time should I go to? Uh, you can go to 2.55 is when the guy comes out. Wait till you see this, because I do kind of like this Obama being gay stuff. And you know uh, it's, it's like it reminds me of the good old days. And I just like that there's a whole news cycle about that he sucked a dick. <laughs> yeah, that's a news story. That? Now that's of course, yeah, we're interviewing to find out how his dick got sucked. <laughs> if he had sex with a girl, would this be news? I don't know, but I guess it's news, and it's been covered by everybody as if it's real news. Here's Tucker. And by the way, Tucker hasn't seen the woods or a creek in 15 years. People fall for this fact. They're like, Tucker's pretty cool because he lives like out in the beautiful woods. It's like, you really think he has a creek right next to his podcast studio? The thing would go into the creek. You know how dangerous that would be? That creek would overflow. It would ruin the equipment. You, nobody has a creek, a babbling brook next to their window. I hope you know that. These are TV screens. Covered by wood to make it look like a window. Do you think some people think that's the real city of Tucson behind me? <laughs> the most populated city in the world, Tucson. <laughs> Bigger than Tokyo, which is what that is. If anyone needs a good background image of buildings, just pick Tokyo it's because the best one we checked. It's just building on top of building on top of building. You can't really make it out. All right, here it is. Obongo being a homo. Some pretty sick stuff revealed here. Studio. 
and we're happy to have him. Larry Sinclair, thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me. Uh, where did you meet Barack Obama? Uh, it was by accident. I was in the Chicago area. In- hey, he's wearing wrist guards just like me. Uh, that's how you look. That's what Mike looks like in bed, literally. I have to wear these wrist guards at night sometimes. And see his nail? That's what Mike's toenail No, no, don't tell them that. See, anytime you joke, and she did this during the symposium, on any other show, you would have to believe they'll they'll believe it Jules you can't make any okay, sort of joke that like that he cuts them so jaggedly that no, I, they're like a knife well that's it's a blade fine they're not long but at they're all sharp. they're very normal how much what do you should I be doing down there anyway I have to wear these wrist guards at night because all of a sudden in the last year and a half I'll wake up 10 times a night with my hands being numb they've fallen asleep my body's asleep. My hands are really asleep, tingling and numb because I find myself sleeping like this, sleeping like that. And you're smashing, especially after a night of power lifting, doing all these hammer curls like I do. Um, <laughs> for some reason, that l- leads to this numbness. So if you wear these wrist guards, it keeps your hands straight. Less numbness, but they're very uncomfortable. I've gone through 16 different brands. I wonder what brand he's got. Does anyone else have this problem where you're waking up at night where your fucking hands are asleep and you got to shake them off? And what could be done about that besides wrist guards, which really don't seem to work anymore? I'm still bending through the guard. You know, it's not going to stop it. I would need a very strong cast to keep these hands straight. Okay, here he is. Pretty cool guy. He does seem to have... Here's the guy who's claiming he had sex with Obama. It's a white guy. How old is this guy? 60? He's got missing teeth. Do we trust a guy with the missing... I watched this whole thing. We're not going to watch this whole thing, but I watched it. I believe him. Don't you? Do you believe the guy on Tucker? Seems like he's telling the truth to me. If he's not telling the truth, he's great at telling a lie. To be great at telling a lie is almost as good as telling the truth. Um, my problem with people like Tate, Logan, and the liars, Josh, Denny, they're so bad at lying. They blatantly just lie in front of our faces. It aggravates me. If you're going to lie, do it like this guy, if this is a lie, and do it perfectly, where you go, he's telling the truth. 99 for Lee Duke's graduation from the Naval Academy. Who's Lee Duke? He's basically my godson. Okay. Um, I had hired a limousine service. I'm sorry to interrupt. Did you live in Chicago then? No. No, I was actually living in Colorado. I had flown in the night before. Okay. So I had hired a limousine service, had made it the driver aware that if Lee couldn't leave the base, because once they graduate, some of them actually get their assignments and they're shipping out and they can't leave the base, that I was still interested in going. So you just look at this. Tucker on X. So you've just... You're just doing a show on X? (laughs) On ecstasy. I really don't like that. (laughs) I really don't like how this is all headed. And had asked the driver if he knew anybody that was available that might want to show me, you know, Chicago. And he said he did. So well, who was the driver? Uh, his name was Jameer um, <laughs> Motani. See this river? Tucker's got a That's flowing like a river. That's name that you would make up. What is his name? Jameer Motani. Jameer Motani. Yes, the driver. <laughs> yeah, he hooked us up. This is a full river here. That's way too close to the podcast studio <laughs> section of the house. Like, wouldn't you have your kitchen facing the river? Where's the kitchen? Just a pick, right? Well, look, it moves. It was with Five Star oh, Limo. Wow. Um, okay, back to Obama. So you're just a guy who's in town for the night, and it sounds like you're looking to party, actually. Yeah. yeah. That's, That's what you're really saying. Yeah. 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 Well, I was in town for a few nights, but yeah, I was definitely looking to party. You're in my city? And Did you make that clear to the driver? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was no misunderstanding. How how, you. how direct were you about that? Uh, extremely. <laughs> Just when I move on from there, by the way. Yeah. There was, the there was no right doubt now? what I... We're at, oh boy. It's at the other side. 435, 425. You can just keep playing it for a I was looking for. Okay. Uh, Wait till you hear what he did to Obama. At my hotel in Gurney and drove into Chicago, pulled up in a bar outside, and there's this guy 
that's introduced to me is Barack Obama. It was literally that casual that... Had you ever heard of him? No. Did the driver know him? Yep. The driver definitely knew him because the driver said that he was a friend. <laughs> Interesting. What, how would the driver be friends with Barack Obama? Because he's the president! I found out <laughs> later of uh, dealing with a reporter from Bloomberg News that apparently the limousine company had been doing business with Tony Resco. Oh. That at the time... Oh, you know that person? Somehow oh, as, Tony affiliated was with Barack Obama's Obama. Orbit. Yeah. Yeah. Resco. Yeah. Interesting. So he knew Barack Obama... And in his view, Barack Obama liked the same kind of partying you were looking for. Yeah. Okay. So sex and drugs, in other words. Well, yeah, the sex part I wasn't so sure about until, of course, you know, you, you make your move. But it became <laughs> obvious very quick. Um, the I coke part I the thought coke was part. interesting because the of the part. way that I had brought it up. So I'm stepping on your story. So you pull, and I apologize. So you pull up to this bar. The driver is basically scouting. Imagine you wake up and somebody's done a 41 hour, 28 million viewed interview about how a guy sucked your dick. Imagine that. Imagine That's you he wake just up. gets to hide. I feel like Obama, Obama must <laughs> respond. I want Obama reacting to this. I'm like a Hassan Anabi type stream that Obama <laughs> runs. Obama. It's time. Get to the desk. You need to do a reaction video to this, and you can, because they're talking about you. It's fair use. <laughs> I want Obama reacting. The, he, he can't keep silent about this. There's a guy, 41-minute interview, claiming that he sucked your dick and did crack and coke with you. Imagine sucking Obama's dick. It's enough to drive any man sick. <laughs> Listen to this. Should I keep playing from here? What time is it at? This is at uh, 5.50. Yeah, keep going. Some dude for you to hang out with. Correct. There's this guy, Barack Obama. Have you ever heard of Barack Obama? Before? Never. Okay. Never. Um, we're having okay, wait, drinks. You can skip I... to 7.30. So 730. he meets up with Obama and then they decide they should go get Coke together and they go and get Really? Coke. They decide that they should. So they get picked up. In Barack Obama's car with they Barack's the driver. Limo, they're driving around. They go get some coke. Seven what? Seven thirty. So far down there. So far down there. Uh, yeah. So they're driving around in the limo. Barack and his driver, and he goes, "Let's uh, get some coke." That was made clear. Yep. Huh. Um, did he say what kind of issues? No. Nope. Remember? No. Nope. So you said, I'm looking for someone to wake up. He knows you're referring to cocaine. I know where to get it. What happens next? We get back in the limo. The driver takes us wherever it is that Barack had instructed him to take us. The entourage nightclub. I had club. given Barack $250 to Woo! pay for coke. Damn. He gets out, comes back. Obama can't um, pay. Wait, two fifty for two guys? That's a lot. <laughs> when I was doing coke, it was 30 bucks a bag for the good stuff. <laughs> Yeah, and what year was this? And that was a lot of money to me. I go, this Coke's expensive. 30 bucks for the whole night's worth <laughs> for four guys? Are you kidding me? That's going to put me under. Everybody was, but yeah, I guess 250 for a bag of Coke. That's a, that could be a lie. What year was this? Like 1999. 99, 250. How much Coke would you get for 250 in 99? That's a lot, right? I've never spent two fifty on Coke. The most I've ever spent, 35 And that was a lot. I mean, that was a bag about this big. From the toilet man at the Entourage nightclub. You'd go in there, you'd knock on the stall. He'd be in there and he'd go, yeah, 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 yeah. I go, thank you, you Mexican. That was my first friendship with a Mexican was uh, buying cocaine. And it probably wasn't. The best stuff. Now that I'm hearing, two fifty. Wow, nineteen ninety nine, two fifty for two people. I start putting a line on a CD tray uh, to snort. Uh, and you're you're in, in the, the limo. limo. So this yep. is interesting. Why would you have a CD tray in the back of Barack's limo? I've been in a lot <laughs> of fancy limos. They don't have CD players in the back. That's in the front, right? 
You would keep your. They usually let you use the controls in the back. There's like an extra CD tray. I'm just trying to, you know, now that I'm hearing this for a second time, I'm thinking CD tray. Would you have that in the back of a limo for Barack? A Barack limo? Maybe. What CD was it? Right. Uh, to snort. Uh, and you're you're in, in the, the limo. limo. Yep. Driving or parked? No, the driver's driving. Yep. I start to put a line on a, on a CD tray, and I just happen to notice that he pulls something else out of his pocket. And next thing I know, he's got a little pipe and he's smoking. So I don't have an issue with it. I mean, some people smoke, some people snort. Smoking the cocaine. Yes. So as I'm... Did he take it from your line? Do you put the line on a CD tray to pinch some of it and put it in a pipe and then try to light pure coke? Is that how it works? Maybe they had each a separate little baggie for two fifty. Maybe. I've never smoked coke. That sounds seedy. I'm doing a line. I just start. This is the part where you, you know, you kind of make your move to, to see where things are going. So I just started rubbing my hand along his thigh to see where it was going. And oh. it went the direction I had intended it to go. So why would you want to touch his disgusting bony black thigh? You touched Barack Obama's thigh. I, I mean, until now, I can't even believe he has a thigh. <laughs> or a lap. So Barack Obama, and you're just rubbing his thigh to see if he's okay. Um, so the night became somewhat active sexually and drug-wise in the limo. Um, so you hit on him. Did he seem shocked by that? Not at all. Ooh, wait. Yeah. We'll see. Oh. <laughs> I do, and I'm not trying to make a case for this. I want this to be as true as grass is green, uh, but I don't know. Fool said? Let's see that again. Um, Did he seem shocked by that? Not at all. Yeah, I mean... (laughs) Eyes are open, not pointed down at the glass. Usually if you're lying, you go like this. Yeah, not at all. I don't know. But this guy remained eye contact. So he's good. Did you remember, did Obama, like, speak to you at all during this? Like, I'd like to hear you do, like, a little impression. Dude, this guy's fucking of ripped, too. That... If I had... Uh, this guy's ripped, dude. Now that I'm looking at him, is this guy ripped or small? Looks bigger than Callan! Wait till you see how puny Brian Callan's become, coming up. And if you're smoking crack with a stranger in the back of a limo, like, you got to imagine things are like go crazy places. Well, not only imagine it. crazy. I look at it this way. I, <laughs> look, I've done a lot of crazy things in my lifetime. I'm a pretty good judge. Then arrest him. I pretty much know. He's admitting it. Arrest whether him. Whether or not I can move in the circle. Certain- See, kids don't know that. Kids are like, then why isn't he arrested? <laughs> You're admitting to doing crazy things in your life that were illegal, then arrest him. He's admitted it. They don't do that somehow. Certain direction with an individual. I didn't feel that I was going in the wrong direction. I just wasn't so sure how much I could trust the individual right. a- at first. Um, and that was probably one of my bigger concerns. But the fact that I was already becoming somewhat buzzed. You kind of throw caution to the wind. You weren't sure you could trust the individual. What does that mean? When you meet someone out of the blue and you go to a level that you're doing drugs with or you're giving money to purchase drugs or even for sexual activity, you have to be sure that you can trust them. And when I say trust, I mean that you're not going to end up being robbed or that you're not going to end up having a knife stuck into you, right. you know, from one direction or another, or that you're not going to pull up somewhere and all of a sudden the car door is going to open and you got five people pulling you out of it. So ooh, that's what ooh, I, ooh, I like. That. Trust yep. Oh, it's time. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, put on some background music. It's time for the nine pill challenge. 
This comes around every show here, you know, every yeah. once in a while you got to take oh, yeah. I smoke a marijuana leaf Nine pills here It is time like it's coming out the sink Keep pouring Hit a four point Nine From the corner And keep scoring Giving on cold performance Every city we tour In my presence Enormous Sun could mm. now shine me For mm. three mornings I let him get the fourth To beat boredom Chief Morton Head of police forces And a TP Wasn't enough water for nine Uh-oh They're gone They're gone Camcorders, what am I speaking for? I got camcorders. All right, turn that shit off. Nine pills, we're good now. You could kill that. You can uh, go to seven thirty. So this was seven forty. We're late. Minutes. We're forty minutes late on my nine pills. Seven forty, eight forty, nine forty. This is what I do five times a day. Eight forty, nine forty, ten forty, eleven forty, twelve forty. I have to count on my fingers for five. And then, what did I say, 1240? Mm-hmm. And you got to go up to the top of the list for these AMs. You know, 12 should be at the bottom of the list. That's still night. <laughs> Keep morning on top. I get it. It's AM. We got to fix that. 12 midnight should be 12 PM. Sorry. So 1240, I don't have one. I'll do 1231 AM. That's close. You ever do this where you go, I got to have every time in the world in my alarms. And then you go, I can't believe I don't have that one in there. I've got 70 other alarms here. Okay, we're good. What okay, time should I go to here? Minutes. 11 minutes. Wait till you hear the gory details of Obama's cock. 11. Like my favorite stranger thing. <laughs> She's growing up nicely. So it, it's not like this was something that he wasn't into. It's yeah. not something that he was shocked by. Yeah. Uh, shocked by you don't get excited and you don't unbutton your pants and you don't just sit there and let it happen. Yeah. So it wasn't, it definitely wasn't Barack's first time. Uh, that much I'm, I'm absolutely certain of. Uh, and I would almost be willing to bet you it wasn't his last. Ooh. So, um, so you performed oral sex on Barack I did. Obama. You did. Wow. Um, in in the driver's up front. Yep. And he's cool with this. The driver has the partition up. He didn't have a problem with it. He didn't put it down for any reason. I mean, he kind of set up the whole thing for this in the first place. Exactly. <laughs> and I have a funny feeling he had no uh, bones to pick with it as far as what took place. In yeah. It. Um, so what happened after? Uh, afterwards, I actually went back to my hotel. I had specifically asked that he drop Barack off first. But for some reason, he and Barack chose that they would drop me off at the hotel first, and then he would take Barack. So Barack actually made the drive out to Gurney, which is a Gurney, Illinois, uh, Six Flags, of Chicago, um, to the hotel. So that is probably at night, hour and twenty minutes away. You should see they've got this town. Believe it or not, it's called Gurney. Uh, this town is famous in Illinois, if you're from Chicagoland, like me, it's Gurney. famous for Six Flags Great America which in Gurney. That's how you first learn about Gurney as a kid in Chicagoland. They have Six Flags. The second time you hear about it is because they've got an outlet mall called the Gurney Mills, where your parents think they're getting a deal on some Nikes for you. Nothing more sickening than a outlet mall. Please, you're not going to find anything good there. Oh, I was at the Banana Republic at the outlet mall. It was some really good. It's all crap nobody could sell. Wake up! All right, was there anything else here? He basically told the whole story. He sucked his dick, then he came back to his hotel for yeah. round two. You want to hear that part? Sure, where's that? Uh, 1230. Okay, we could keep playing. Oh, for me to be dropped off. What hotel was it? It was the Comfort Inn in Gurney. Ooh, that sounds depressing. It Whoa! Not to him. The Comfort Inn was nice. Listen to this exchange. This is funny because he goes, it was the Comfort Inn in Gurney. And he goes, ooh, rough. And wait till you hear this guy's response to that. And in Gurney. Ooh, that sounds depressing. It, well, you have to remember it was 99. Yeah. No, <laughs> what does that mean? What do you mean? You have to remember it's 99. Uh, the Comfort Inn was nice in 99? Or there weren't that many cool hotels back then? Or Obama wasn't president rich, so we had to go to the Comfort Inn? He couldn't be more disgusted about this Comfort Inn detail. <laughs> and it was close to the Great, Plain, Great Lakes Naval facilities. Yeah. Okay. But um, What do you need that for? 
I got dropped off. They left. Uh, the next day was somewhat interesting because he ends up showing up at my hotel room, mm. which I thought was somewhat weird, but... He wanted some more. Mm-hmm. So when you say he showed up... So maybe they had a highway journey. You know, I used to do this when I was a kid. Um, I had a car. I was supposed to be going to school with the car, right? At my school, you would take Milwaukee Avenue from my house to get to the school. But if you just kept going straight down Milwaukee Avenue, guess where you'd get, Jules, in an hour? Where? Gurney! I remember this. I used to, I would start listening to music, and I'd be pulling up. Here's Milwaukee Avenue. Here's the school. I'd go, and nah, nah. And I would just tell my parents I was at school, but meanwhile, I just drove to Gurney, and then a little bit further to, you know, Wisconsin and stuff. And then you drive back by the time you're home. That was the end of the school day. You just drove around all day. Maybe they drove from Chicago to Gurney to do, because it's a nice drive to just do cocaine and blow people in the back. I mean, it's a nice open <laughs> highway all the way from Chicago. Interesting. I don't know why they went to Gurney, um, but they did. And then Obama came back to Gurney an hour and a half. I fucking guess so. So you went all the way back to Chicago, back to Gurney. See, people don't know about this Gurney. There's a big hole in the story here. Uh, he just he showed up. I mean, I had no warning. I was in the room. There's a knock on the door. I opened the door, and he's standing there. Whoa! And he's standing there with more coke. And he comes in, and it was just like a quick. Was he wearing you know, a suit or like? I know. I always imagine him in the suit. What is he wearing? He pulls it out. The bag goes. <laughs> Is he in a suit? What is he wearing? Is he wearing African sweatshirts? Did he say, let me be clear? <laughs> what was he wearing? Like, he's not giving very many. And how did he get any sleep? Obama details. Like, you got to tell us something that only Obama would he's do. He's on that Coke. He he's doing night. Coke all night. Goes back to Chicago. And then you're telling me in the morning he got up after not sleeping at all, doing Coke all night and drove all the way back to Gurney. To see you, and you look just like this, hopefully, back then. In 99, the only thing different about you is your hair was a little yeah, Can brown. we see a pic of you then? Yeah, I would love to see lot. what you look like in 99, where you're wearing this red shirt. Rehash or rerun from the night before. Exact same program. Exact same program. Was he smoking again? Yep. So Barack mm -hmm. Obama smokes crack, and then you perform yep. all sex on him. And the, like I said, the only reason I had come out in about it is I had reached out to the campaign even in 2007. Why? Only because I saw all these kids getting excited about. It. Okay, wait. Just, I, I just so. Okay, is that basically enough of this? Go to 16 minutes. There, I just thought this okay. part was funny. <laughs> this is what Tucker says after hearing all of this. 16. Okay. Oh. We're stuck. The timeline is no longer showing me. Uh... It's not oh. moving now. Let's see what happens. Oh. Well, after hearing this is all this Twitter Tucker video. Goes, uh oh, I've been kicked off. That's <laughs> enough for X. After hearing all this, Tucker goes, "Amazing, amazing!" And it's like, "What's amazing?" <laughs> Why well, amazing. amazing. He's got a hit video on his hands. So, Barack Obama, we're waiting.